So let's talk about using the very basics of the script task to send email using Visual Basic. Now, if you've already just gotten through watching the C-sharp video, which just kind of in the sorting order came first in this series, there's no reason to watch this one. Uh, I, the syntax is marginally different. Fast forward to the parts where you get the syntax or just download the file, uh, look at the file rather, and you'll see the difference. This, this, we're going to be using the same methods, the same classes. It's, it's not massively changed. But this is really for those of you who skipped the C-sharp because you're going to be working in Visual Basic. So let's just go ahead and take a look. I'm going to create a new package. I have saved this as script01. It's included in this video in the download file. You can see that I've put in that both a C-sharp and a VB version. So you can look at both, compare, contrast. Uh, I'm using a learn it first at live.com account. Uh, the path, you are not able to use that account because after this video I will change the password. So, you know, substitute your own accounts uh, for this to test it. But let me just make a new package. We're going to grab the script task. Uh, in case I didn't say it uh, enough, this is just an overview of doing this. Later in chapters 5 and 7, we are going to go way deep on how to make fancy emails and all kind of stuff. So send email using VB. The first thing I need to do is switch my language. Click my edit script. Now when I click the edit script button, what's happening is behind the scenes, integration services has a template. And it's just simply creating that template and filling it in with a bunch of commented information. Now you can see that script main is the entry point. So what is script main? Script main is the actual class name. So you can see it being defined right there. It's a partial class. It brings it in. And then we're able to use this. This is when the script task executes. This is the class that gets started. It's not just the script main, but it's actually the main method of the script main class that gets called when the script task executes. You may have other classes in here. You may have other objects. You could come down here and make a new class right down here below here. Then you could instantiate that and work with it down here. It's up to you, but just keeping it at a high level, we're just going to focus on the main method for the time being. Now, the next thing that you see once the class has been defined is this enumerator, this enumeration for script results. Script results success is equal to the success property of the DTS exec result. If you scroll down, you can see that the task will either end with script results dot success or script results dot failure. And so if we ended in failure, that's how we can cause the task to fail. Later on in chapter seven, we're going to talk about try catch and how you really do sometimes want to force a failure, even though you didn't have a syntax error or a connection error. And we would do that by saying script results dot failure. Okay. So we're saying that the task executes and ends in success once it gets to this line. Now the little comment section that you see right here. These are little templates that you can use. Uh, I'll just pull these up. Um, if you wanted to reference a variable, this is like a step-by-step -step guide to the basics of the object model here. So I'd say one, step one, to reference a variable, use that syntax. Step two, if you want to add to the SSIS log, do that. Step three, you want to fire an SSIS event, do this. You want to use the connections, uh, then step four, you could do it like that. Again, I'm not going to go into those right now because chapters 5 and 7, we're going to spend a lot of time doing those. Our goal right here in this is just to show you the basics of how to send an email in Visual Basic. That's all I'm really trying to do here. So I'm going to come down here. Uh, I do need to import two namespaces. So I need the system.net because we're going to need the network credentials. And I need the system dot, sorry, system dot net dot mail because we want to be able to send mail using the built-in .NET framework. So 
Okay. Now it's just a matter of knowing which uh, which classes that I need to work with. So there's two classes that we have to work with, and I'm going to define a variable message uh, as a new mail message. Okay. So that is first the class that we need to work with. This is going to encapsulate everything about our email itself. It's going to define when we open up here. I can scroll through the overrides, and here's a particular override that I'm going to take advantage of. Now, it's in the gray in the back, but you can see we're defining from to. Those are the email addresses. We define what the subject is, and we'll define the body. Later on, Chapter 7, we're going to make these more dynamic. We're going to make the body be read from an email or from a website. Uh, right now, let's just keep it really basic. So I type in learn it first at live.com. That's the from. And I'll send it to the same address. And the subject will be, hey, from VB. And the body will be. Okay. So I've defined what the actual email is. I've defined who it's from, who it's to, what it contains. But I need to weigh a way to send it, and I'm going to do that with the SMTP client class. So when I create a new client, notice that I put in the host and the port. Okay, The host, and I'm using live. We'll talk later on in the course about how to send through Gmail or Yahoo. But as of October 2009, it is smtp.live.com port 25. Who knows, with this Bing thing, they may change it to smtp.bing.com. I don't know. can't figure out a lot of that stuff. <laughs> uh, live requires an SSL connection. So I use the enable SSL property, and I just set that to true. Um, I do need to set my delivery method to be the network. Uh, so it's not picking it up from a directory, for example. It's using a network delivery. And... I need to specify what the SMTP account's password is. And so I do that with the credentials property. And we make a new network credential. And so you're passing in your username, which is your email address, and just your password. And again, I am going to change this password after this video. So don't bother trying to use that email. And don't send me an email because I don't check it. Uh, I, I think that I created this for the last SSIS course. So. Uh, so let's see. Then I just have to use the send method, and I will send the message. That's it. Now, later on in the course, we're going to get fancy with HTML emails, uh, but this is just a text-based email. So I've got everything that I need. I say go. I'm logged into Windows Live, Hotmail, whatever the heck it's called this week. And you can see over here under mail, there it is. And it sent us a fancy woo email. So pretty simple to do this. What I did not do in my code was do things like put a try catch in here. Um, I, I, we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Again, I know I keep repeating it, but chapter 7, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, being more fancy and, and being more robust and defensive with your coding. Uh, but just rest assured that if it was unable to send the email due to an authentication problem or a network timeout, it would not end in success. It would end in red, so it would actually fail.